In 2020, Angel Lynn was a beautiful 19-year-old young woman who had her whole life ahead of her. She had aspirations of being a forensic scientist for the police. However, she'd never get that opportunity. For the last year, she'd been in the clutches of 20-year-old Che Boskill, a horrific excuse for a man who had physically, emotionally and psychologically abused Angel, leaving behind a trail of truly vile messages that he'd sent to someone he claimed to love. By September 2020, Angel had had enough and tried to leave Boskill, but he wouldn't let this happen. She was his possession to use and abuse as he saw fit. On the morning of the 17th of September 2020, Boskill kidnapped Angel, literally lifting her off the street and carrying her to a waiting van. This harrowing CCTV footage shows the moment of her abduction. Just 10 minutes later, Angel was found lying seriously injured on the side of the A6 dual carriageway. She'd either fallen or been pushed out of the van she was abducted in whilst she was travelling at between 60 and 70 miles an hour. Angel survived, but with horrific, life-changing injuries, which means she's now severely disabled and will need round-the-clock care for the rest of her life. Boskill robbed her of any hope for the future, which she dreamed about and which she rightly deserved. This case is truly horrific and heartbreaking in equal measures, not just because of the actions of this monster, but also his remorselessness, the justification of his actions by his family, the lenient sentence he received, and the quality of life that Angel is now forced to live. Welcome to Evil Among Us. There's little information about Che Boskill's background and upbringing. He was born in around the year 2000 and raised in the town of Syston in the county of Leicestershire, which lies in the East Midlands of the UK. He's the son of Cathy Norris and has at least one sibling, a brother called Rhys Norris. We'll circle back to these two awful human beings later. I cannot find any information about his father's name or his early years. In court, it was stated that Boskill had a quote, unguided childhood, which I take to mean that he was never taught any boundaries, rules, compassion for others, and was generally an antisocial yob. From an early age, he was a menace to society, and would steal cars, joyriding and driving like a maniac, filming his exploits. I have a particular disdain for dangerous drivers. A car is a lethal weapon, and these idiots put everyone else's lives at risk, including their own, just to get their pathetic little kicks. Unfortunately, when they do crash, they tend to kill other people, whilst they miraculously survive, just to spend two minutes in prison before getting out and doing the same thing again. Anyway, Boskill was heavily linked to organised crime as a teenager, and we're not talking about selling a bit of weed. He was part of a highly organised car stealing ring. He went from county to county, breaking into homes, stealing keys to luxury cars, and then driving off with these, and either selling them on whole or stripping them for parts. The gang stole at least 51 luxury cars, including an £80,000 Audi SQ7 and a £75,000 Mercedes C63. In total, the value of the cars they're known to have stolen came to £1,153,500, with many of these vehicles, £373,000 worth, never being recovered. Clearly, Boskill thought he was a bad boy, a gangster, and would post intimidating pictures like this. Good old sarcasm. They say a picture is worth a thousand words, and even from this one image, you can tell a lot about Boskill. He was a pathetic little boy who wanted others to think he was a big man. In reality, he was a weak, poor excuse for a human being whose life revolved around taking things for himself. This underlying weakness, narcissism, and self-entitled attitude would unfortunately extend to his relationships with him seeing his partners as objects to be used and abused, to be controlled so they wouldn't leave him. Unfortunately, Angel Lim would fall into his web and her relationship with Che Boskill would rob her of her future and almost cost her her life. Angel Lim was born in 2001 and was the fourth of six children to her parents Nikki and Paddy. She had a very close relationship with her parents, siblings and wider family. She was described as quote, a crazy young girl, full of life, feared nothing. If anybody could hold their own, Angel could. Angel was an ambitious girl. She wanted to join the police as a forensic scientist and was completing a public service course at college. Angel was also responsible. She had a number of part-time jobs from a young age, intending to pay her way and save money for her future. She loved spending time with her friends and it was through them that she met her first boyfriend when she was around 17 years old. This was Angel's first love and stood in stark contrast to what came next. 
This boy was attentive, caring, and there were no secrets between them. The pair would spend time at each other's houses and met their respective parents. However, the relationship ended. This devastated Angel, not only because she'd lost her boyfriend, but also she didn't feel she could hang out with their mutual friends because it was too awkward. After months of nursing a broken heart, Angel got back out in the world, and it was on one of these nights out in the summer of 2019 that she met Che Boskill, and they quickly began a relationship. The relationship between Angel Lynn and Che Boskill only lasted a year, and as soon as it started, he began to control her. Like most domestic abusers, I have no doubt that he was a predator. I think he sensed Angel's vulnerability. She'd broken up with her first boyfriend and was likely looking for someone to fill the gap. As I go through this video, I point out the warning signs common to domestic abusers to gain and maintain control of their victims. The relationship moved quickly, with the pair spending almost every waking moment together. The word love was used in the first few weeks by Boskill, and he would text Angel constantly, asking what she was doing, where she was, and who she was with. All of this was part of a tactic called love bombing, where the perpetrator bombards their victim with attention and affection in order to manipulate them, forming a bond between the pair quickly and trying to force their victim to see them as the most important person in the world, someone who needs to be responded to immediately and have their demands met. This sort of attention is often intoxicating. Which of us, especially in the aftermath of a breakdown, wouldn't want someone to sweep us off our feet? But this was all deliberate methodical behaviour by Boskill to worm his way into Angel's life. Boskill began getting Angel to lie to her parents. They knew the pair were in a relationship, but Angel would tell them they were just friends. He barely spent any time with their parents, and instead they'd go from hotel room to hotel room, where the pair would often spend all their time. No doubt he used the money from his crimes to fund all of this. Outwardly, this must have seemed exciting to Angel, someone with money spending it on her, so she could stay in nice hotels. However, this was to enable Boskill to further love bomb her, but also to drive a wedge between her and her parents. Soon, Boskill began to dictate how Angel dressed and how she appeared. She went from being a very girly girl to wearing baggy tracksuits, not doing her hair, and also not doing her makeup. Her family noticed this, but it wasn't until later they put two and two together that Boskill was trying to make Angel unattractive to other men, reducing the chances that she would leave him for someone else. Che Boskill would constantly ask Angel where she was and what she was doing. Clearly, this was him checking up on her, and he sent messages subtly implying this, including, quote, Never know I might be watching. Boskill would monitor Angel's social media. If any men added her, he would kick off and demand that she block them. Boskill had no job, so he had plenty of time to spend controlling and monitoring Angel. He would sometimes park his car along routes he knew that she would use to go to college and to her jobs, and he would follow her. This was seen by others, including a friend of hers called Cheryl. On one occasion, Cheryl asked Angel to take her to Leicester so she could go to her daughter's birthday, and on the way, they spotted Boskill's car parked on a back road. It began to follow them. Angel's phone was going off every two seconds, with Boskill demanding to know where she was going and what she was doing. When Angel and Cheryl got to Leicester, Angel briefly went inside the house where the party was going on, as you would, but this was unacceptable to Boskill as there were boys there. He began berating Angel, accusing her of cheating on him without any evidence, sending messages such as the following quote, Fuck off Angel, you divvy little slag. Domestic abuse perpetrators almost always have issues with their self-esteem and a fear of abandonment. Sexual jealousy is common with the perpetrator feeling that, because they feel so low about themselves, any man is a threat, and it's inevitable that if their partner is allowed to interact with any man, they will see how inadequate they are, and they'll be abandoned. So domestic abuse perpetrators often have a particular sensitivity to their partners having contact with other men. Don't get me wrong, most of us have a pang of jealousy at some point or are concerned about who our partner is spending time with and their intentions. However, what I'm talking about is something else. What I'm referring to is extreme paranoia and jealousy and the perpetrator having an often disproportionate reaction to even the most trivial of contact between their partner and a man. Literally, them talking to the postman my later accusations of cheating. As an example of how twisted this thinking can become, in the most extreme case I've come across, a man was jealous of a woman's ex-husband, despite him having been dead for 10 years and his ashes being kept in an urn in the house. He accused her of having sex with the ashes. No, I'm not sure how that would work, and I'm not joking. 
So these types of men will, in some cases, seek to cut off any contact with men, including blocking them on social media and keeping their partner away from any situation where they may interact with a male and forcing them to dress in a way they believe is less likely to attract male attention. So for example, baggy clothes, no makeup, etc. In early 2020, just months after the relationship began, Justice caught up with Bo School and he was sent to prison for four months for theft. Clearly, panic set in as he couldn't control Angel as easily from prison, but he had a plan. She was to be at home to speak to him every day at 6pm. Of course, he could have called her on her mobile, but by calling the house phone, he knew exactly where she was. He would use these conversations to interrogate her about whether she'd had any contact with any men and threatening what would happen to them if she had. This was caught on recorded phone calls from prison, as shown by this very short excerpt. Yeah, I am. I don't want to be getting asked. Right. After his release from prison in mid-2020, one of the first things that Che Boskill did was march around to Angel's parents' house, storm in, and begin shouting in Angel's face, screaming, quote, I want my fucking money. You spent some of it. This is apparently linked to him having given her £80 before he went to prison, and he wanted it back. Angel's parents paid him off and told him to fuck off. This cash he was demanding was in addition to the money that Angel had sent him whilst he was in prison. Much of this went on phone credit in order for him to continue to abuse her. When Boskill began physically assaulting Angel is unclear. It was likely soon after the relationship started, with him using violence to impose his will and crush any independence that Angel had. However, it is known that he did beat her on the 9th of July 2020, and this was reported to the police by the neighbours. On this occasion, they could hear Boskill again accusing Angel of cheating on him. He then pushed her with so much force that she hit her head on a wall and ended up having a seizure. The neighbour who called the police said they heard Boskill saying, quote, Get up, you fucking slag. Do you want a bit more? I have no information about what happened with this incident, but it appears that Boskill threatened her Angel if she told the police what had happened. So, I imagine she refused to give a statement and no charges were filed. As well as physical violence, Angel Lynn was subjected to emotional and psychological abuse 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. The police recovered thousands of vile and horrific text messages with Boskill repeatedly calling Angel a woman he claimed to love, horrific names including slag, and making her believe that without him, she would be nothing and she would be alone that no one would ever love her. This sick cow would regularly quote unquote break up with Angel and they'd get her to beg for his forgiveness. Clearly he had no intention of ending the relationship. Everything he was doing was to make sure this didn't happen, but he wanted her to be upset, scared and constantly on edge. He would demand contact 24 hours a day. It was not unusual for Angel to go to sleep and wake up to multiple messages demanding that she call him, asking where she was and then, when she didn't respond because she was asleep, text accusing her of cheating on him and calling her a slag. Che Boska would also take Angel's money from a cleaning job and use it on himself. She was his possession to use and abuse as he wanted. Imagine that sick, stomach-churning feeling that you get when you're about to do something you're anxious about. Now imagine that all day, every day. That's what Angel and other domestic abuse victims have to go through. They, like Angel, are trapped the clutches of an abusive, manipulative and often dangerous partner whose whole life is devoted to controlling someone they claim to love. However, Angel Lynn kept fighting, trying to retain some of who she was and she began to defy Boskill and try to live her life. She was becoming tired of the abuse, of this pathetic excuse for a man trying to control her. She wanted to end the relationship. Her mind was made up when, a few days before her abduction, Boskill again attacked her, violently throwing her against a wall. But Che Boskill would not have this, and Angel Lynn's decision to leave would almost cost her her life. What happened on the 17th of September 2020 will never be known for certain, but on this date, Angel, now aged 19 years old, had been at a cleaning job in the early morning, and when she finished, she went to pick up Che Boskill and his friends Rocco Sansom and Mason Cooper. All three men were 20 years old. It's apparent from what I've read that part of the controlling this relationship was Boskill expecting to use Angel as a taxi service, ferrying him and his friends around. 
when Angel picked up the three, Boskill took on the task of driving, and at some point along the journey, an argument occurred between him and Angel. What this argument was about, we'll never know. But this caused him to stop the van on Loughborough Road, close to the A6, near the town of Loughborough. Angel then got out, began to walk away. Boskill then emerged from the van and ran across the street, grabbed Angel and lifted her off the ground, carrying her back to the van and forcing her inside. The van then sped off. The time was 10.36am. This time, Rocco Sanson was driving the vehicle, with Angel sat in the middle and Boskill sat between her and the door, his hand up on the dashboard, blocking her potential escape route. The van was seen by several people being driven erratically and apparently shaking. Clearly Angel was fighting to escape. At 10.39am, CCTV cameras captured the van arriving at a pub car park and Mason Cooper exited through the side sliding door and walked away. There's no indication he raised any sort of alarm and it also doesn't look like he was ever arrested or prosecuted for anything. At 10.47am, whilst the van was travelling at between 60 and 70 miles an hour down the A6 dual carriageway, Angel Lim fell, jumped or was pushed out of the side door of the van, landing on the road, suffering catastrophic injuries. This horrific scene was witnessed by other road users and, by some miracle, they were able to avoid running Angel over. The van stopped around 50 metres away and Boskill got out and came back towards the spot where Angel was now lying unconscious and severely injured in the road. This twisted creature used the opportunity to get his defence in as quickly as possible. He told the shot bystanders that he told Angel that he hated her and wanted to break up with her and suddenly, when they were travelling along, he would heard the slide door in the van open and Angel had apparently jumped out in an attempt to commit suicide because she was so heartbroken that their relationship had come to an end. What an absolute load of bollocks. Clearly, whilst his girlfriend was lying in the road, fighting for her life, Che Boskill's only concern was himself. The police arrived and arrested both Che Boskill and Rocco Sansom on suspicion of kidnapping and causing grievous bodily harm. Angel Lynn was flown by air ambulance to Queen's Medical Centre in Nottingham in a critical condition and her parents Nikki and Paddy rushed to her bedside. Angel had suffered catastrophic injuries to her head, including multiple skull fractures. There was bleeding which was causing pressure on her brain and this resulted in part of her skull having to be removed in order to relieve the pressure. She was ventilated and put into a medically induced coma. The horror of what Nikki and Paddy were confronted with when they saw their daughter in hospital must have made their blood run cold. They were told to spend as much time with their daughter as they could as she was not expected to survive. In fact, doctors were astounded that she'd not been killed outright by hitting the concrete on the road, apparently head first, at at least 60 miles an hour. Her parents were told that if Angel did survive, she would be severely disabled for the rest of her life. But Angel didn't die. She kept fighting, and her survival is a testament to her strength. She spent months in hospital and contracted both COVID and pneumonia. She was so poorly that she was given the last rites three times, but she refused to give up. I'll talk more about Angel's survival soon, but I want to mention her courage and that of Nikki and Paddy, which stands in stark contrast to the pathetic and cowardly man that Che Boskill is. Whilst Angel was fighting for her life, both Che Boskill and Rocco Sansom were interviewed by the police. Boskill didn't remain quiet, he needed to get his ridiculous defence over as often as possible to as many people as possible. He said that his relationship with Angel was turbulent, but that she quote, gave as good as she got. He admitted verbal abuse, but claimed that he'd never been violent towards her, he was not controlling, and that he hadn't kidnapped her, despite all of these things being easy to disprove. Again, he claimed that he tried to break up with Angel, and then all of a sudden, she'd apparently thrown herself out of a van, travelling at almost the national speed limit. Sansom, clearly trying to cover for Boskill, claimed that he'd not seen Angel being abducted, and also stated that she'd thrown herself out of the van in an apparent attempt to commit suicide. The police didn't believe them, and both were charged with kidnapping and causing grievous bodily harm and remanded into custody. In January 2022, both men went on trial at Nottingham Crown Court. As well as charges of kidnapping and causing grievous bodily harm, Che Boskill was also charged with coercive and controlling behaviour in his relationship with Angel Lynn. Both men pleaded not guilty to all charges. Sickeningly, I have no doubt that both Boskill and Sansom played the odds 
and realised that due to Angel's condition, she would not be able to give evidence or likely remember exactly what had happened. So, if they pleaded not guilty, they could put down to the jury's mind and potentially get away with it. Both men stuck to their ridiculous stories that Angel had decided to end her life and deliberately jumped out of a moving vehicle. With regards to the charge of kidnapping, Boskill gave the most pathetic defence, claiming that he decided for some reason to pick Angel up and take her back to the van rather than driving off without her. This he apparently did without any indication that she didn't want to go with him. Rocco Sansom continued to play the part of Boskill's lapdog and continued to claim that he was both blind and deaf, with him stating that he'd not seen the abduction of Angel and had no idea she'd been taken against her will. I mean seriously, he's trying to state that Angel, who was sat next to him, just sat there silently. Che Bosco again denied in court that he was controlling and abusive in his relationship with Angel, but the prosecution had a key piece of evidence showing the monster this man is and his willingness to abuse and threaten everyone around him in order to get his own way. This came in the form of recorded prison phone calls Bosco had made from H&P Nottingham where he was on remand, with him calling his mother Kathy Norris and abusing her about the fact she'd made a statement to the police saying he was controlling. This is part of one of those phone calls. Hello, Mum. Hello. Listen, what did you say in that statement you gave to the police? You better ring the police up now, yeah? Because you was drunk when you gave the statement as well, weren't you? I weren't, no. You best ring them up now, Mum. As soon as you get off this phone and you ring them up and you say and you tell them you was drunk, make sure you tell them you was drunk. You've told her that I've been making her do things controlling or telling her where she can and can't go. And I just said you were controlling, because you were. You shouldn't have said anything from the start, should you? No! Fucking idiot! Not listening to a load of abuse off you, Jay. Listen, Mum, you're a fucking horrible bastard, mate. I don't know what is wrong with you, man. Why the fuck you would ever do that? His attempt to get his mother to withdraw her statement, which she tried to do, landed Che Boskill with another charge, perverting the course of justice. The jury didn't believe the men's lies. Both Che Boskill, Rocco Sansom, were found guilty of kidnapping Angel Lynn. Boskill was also found guilty of coercive and controlling behaviour in their relationship, as well as perverting the course of justice. However, heartbreakingly, both men were found not guilty of causing grievous bodily harm to Angel. This was due to the fact that the jury could not agree whether she had been pushed, accidentally fallen, or jumped out of the van, and because of this, the men had to be acquitted. On the 22nd of January 2022, both men stood for sentence before Judge Timothy Spencer KC. For his role in the kidnapping of Angel Lynn, Rocco Sanson was sentenced to 21 months imprisonment. With regards to Che Boskill, the judge referred to him as quote vile, and slammed his mother, Kathy Norris, for trying to rob Angel and her family of justice. The judge then sentenced him. For the kidnapping of Angel Lynn, abusing her during their relationship and trying to avoid his just deserts, Che Boskill was initially sentenced to seven years and six months in prison. After his sentencing, there were two hearings regarding his sentence, both in March 2022. The first, brought by his defence, argued that the sentence imposed was excessive, stating that the judge had overplayed the seriousness of these crimes and claimed that he had not taken into account Boskill's immaturity and youth at the time of his offending. This was promptly rejected, with Bo Skill apparently shaking his head when the decision was read out. However, an application from the Solicitor General to the Court of Appeal argued that the sentence was too lenient and did not reflect the gravity of Bo Skill's crimes. The court agreed, and the sentence of Che Bo Skill was increased from seven and a half years to twelve years imprisonment. Despite this increase in sentence, I think you'll agree, when you get to the end of this video, that twelve years is not long enough for this animal. Taking into account his time on remand waiting for his trial, Che Boskill was likely to be released in around 2026 when he'll still be in his mid-twenties. I cannot make this video without commenting on the horrific people tied to Che Boskill by blood, who despite the horror of his crimes, justify, deny and make light of what he did. Beginning with Kathy Norris, Boskill's mother, she's proven herself to be a horrific human being. Soon after the trial in January 2022, it was reported that Kathy had been making comments stating that her son was quote, not a bad boy, but he's not a saint, as well as stating that she was standing by her son 
Kathy has made some disgusting statements about his crimes, including, quote, Che told me he'd finished with her, didn't want her to go, so he went after her, and picked her up and put her back in the van. Everyone is blaming Che for her injuries, but he didn't cause them. I can't blame my son for her injuries. I need to protect him and stand by him. What happened to Angel has destroyed me. It's my son's third time in prison. I have to accept what he's done. But he's being branded an evil kidnapper. And while he took Angel, it was to protect her, not hurt her. In the eyes of the law, that is kidnap. But the sentence he was given is too long. I know Angel's family feel it is not long enough. We all wish he'd driven off and left her there. How does any of that make any sense? So he finished with her but didn't want her to go. So dragged her back in the van. And protect her? What the fuck is she talking about? He kidnapped her. To protect her. That makes absolutely no sense. Kathy has since been bleating to the papers about how she's been the target of online trolls because of what she said and what her son did. Unfortunately, it gets worse. In March 2022, it was reported that both school's brother, Reese Norris, had been posting disgusting online posts mocking Angel's disabilities, claiming his brother hadn't done anything wrong and threatening to rob Angel's parents of money they were raising to try and buy her medical equipment. This is essential medical equipment to keep their daughter alive because of what his brother did. I'm not going to lie to you guys. When I heard about this case, specifically due to what I include in the next section, I had a little cry. I'm not going to apologise for that. The fact that I, and I'm sure many of you, will feel just as devastated shows how horrific not only Che Boskill is, but also his mother and his brother to be so callous and mock a woman whose life has been completely destroyed. I hope that at some point, all three of these people get what they deserve in some form or another. The focus of this part of the video has to be Angel, to highlight the devastating impact of this incident on her and her parents, whilst also shining a spotlight on their bravery. At the appeal hearing in March 2022, the extent of Angel's life-changing injuries was read out in the court, with it being stated, quote, She is severely brain damaged. She does not make purposeful movements. She shows little sign of being aware of her surroundings or interacting with them. She receives her nutrition through a tube straight into her stomach as she cannot swallow. She is doubly incontinent. She cannot communicate. She is very likely to be severely disabled, mentally and physically, for the rest of her life and will be dependent on others for all aspects of care. The devastating impact of this incident on Angel's parents, Nikki and Paddy, cannot be overstated, and it mustn't be forgotten. I'm going to play a clip from October 2022, with them talking about how hard they found it, trying to come to terms with the life-limiting injuries their daughter has suffered. You want to talk about this sentence? Yeah. Let's just remind people what, what happened to um, Angel. She was bundled into a van uh, by her boyfriend at the time, Che, um, and then she fell from the vehicle as it travelled at 60 miles an hour. This happened back in September 2020, so uh, almost two years ago. Um, as a result of falling from that van, she suffered catastrophic brain injury and is unable to communicate and needs round-the-clock care. Now, this young man, Che, uh, received a jail term of seven and a half years. Yeah. When you heard that that <clears throat> was the sentence, what did you feel in court? Devastated. And tell us why. Because Angel's just... She's got no life now, mm. ever. We don't know if she'll ever walk, talk, eat. <laughs> She was 19 at the time of what happened. Do, Paddy, just describe your daughter, your 19-year-old daughter. Oh, she's beautiful. Mm. She's amazing. Tell beautiful. Us, tell us a little bit about her. She's good fun. Mm -hmm. She was just really happy before she met him. Mm -hmm. She had lots of friends. Um, now, 
He's just taken everything away from us, mm. our family. Mm. She, had, she, had, she had a whole life ahead. She had ambitions, yes. hopes, dreams. Yes, she did. Um, and he's taken all that away now. And I, I just can't forgive him now. No. Ever. Um, completely understandable. Paddy, what, what did Angel want from her life? What, what were her hopes and dreams? She wanted to go into the police and do forensic science, didn't she, know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, until she met him, yeah. Mm. And she changed. You saw a change in her, did you, yes, as a result of her relationship? She changed, yeah, a lot. She didn't want mm. to do anything with family. Everything she did resolve, mm. revolved around um, mm. Che. It's so hard when you are a parent. I've got two... Um, daughter's 17, 22, if you see your daughter kind of getting involved with somebody who, who, who you're worried about, whether they are being controlling, coercive, bullying, as a parent, it's really hard to know what to do, isn't it? I mean, how do you... Did she listen to you when you, when you, when you raised concerns? Not really. <laughs> Not really, no. Cos she knew her own mind. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I guess, and afterwards, you think, could I have done more? You do, that's right, yeah. Yeah, you do. I mean, if we could turn back the clocks, mm. we, things would be different. And you we almost be blame yourself up. for yeah. it. But you just... Yeah. The they... judge seems to have said that he was a very immature. Or, yeah, he did, yeah. And that is partly why the judge seems to have given him a, a lighter... Lenient sentence. sentence but... Yeah. I mean, they've laughed all through court. They've laughed through the whole court case, so... You know, and in the, the judge court, Spencer In the court, said, yeah, the, the, there was laughing and the judge had to tell him off and... Because the, the young lad who was driving the van was also yes. convicted and, and sentenced yeah. for... 21 months. 21 months. 21 months. I mean, it's nothing. Yeah. Um, and they, they, their quote was, um, this is ruined... The other lad said, this has ruined his life. <laughs> He's barrister He's not got that. a clue. But you know what... No, having he a stood life ruined me. Oh. said, he, this has ruined my life. Are you clear about what happened that day? I'm clear in my mind. Because the images sh show Che putting his arms mm. around your daughter to mm. bundle her into the back of the van. And then, for some reason, she's... She comes out of the van at 60 miles an hour. Mm. I mean, it's no surprise that... No. He says he'll just put her in the van to... Help her. <laughs> ...look after <laughs> look her, after and her. he didn't want her stranded there. But you can see for yourself, anybody seeing those pictures knows what's going on. I mean, that was yeah. coercion. And that is what they are convicted of, mm. but the, the law allows a much, much bigger sentence for the crime they were convicted of than the judge gave. I think I'm right in saying this has now been looked at again. It's being referred by the Attorney yeah. General to look at this again. It is, yeah. What do you think is the right thing to do? I think it should be looked at again. Um, and I think he should get a longer sentence. I think that the day before court, the sentencing, Judge Spencer said, um, you're looking at a hefty sentence. Well, I don't think he gave a hefty sentence at mm. all. Convicted of kidnap, coercive and controlling behaviour and perverting the course of justice. Mm. And because of time already served on remand, he will become eligible for release in June 2024. Mm. Meanwhile, Angel serves her own life sentence, doesn't she? And you do as well. Angel will probably still be lying in bed when he's out, mm. ruining some other person's life. How's Angel doing right now? Um, pretty much the same as she's been all the time. Mm. Um, she can't um, walk, talk, eat, drink. She's peg-fed for a tummy. We don't know if she actually knows who we are when we visit. How um, often can you see her? Every day. We see her every day. Mm. Oh, the really good way she is. We'll see her today when we get home. My brothers went to see her yesterday. Mm. So, that, you know, to make sure she had a visit, a care home, where she is, has been... Um, they're amazing. 
Brilliant. They really are amazing. And the care um, home before that was as well. Yeah, really, the, yeah. Really good. We've had so much support, really, off everybody. So it's hard to but, hard to imagine how difficult it's been for both of you. But um, Paddy and Nikki, Angel's parents, thank you so much for, yeah. for talking about this with us yeah. so, so um, openly. And um, I mean, we've got so much to do mm. as well to get ready for Angel. Because um, you'd like to bring her home, uh, wouldn't you? Yeah, we do want to bring her home, but yeah. we've not, we don't live in the biggest of houses. Mm. Um, there's lots to be done. We need so much doing. Mm. Just We're actually doing some fundraising at the it minute. It don't bear thinking yeah. about right. what, what we need doing. <laughs> well, well, we've got a GoFundMe page set up for her, and okay. we've done charity events, haven't we, Nick? Well, I hope so. you can raise the money to make the adjustments to bring her home because I'm sure that would mean the world. It would, yes. I love the fact that Angel Lynn is still alive is a miracle. It's been recently reported that this brave woman continues to surprise medical professionals. In May 2023, Angel stood up for the first time and in September 2023, she spoke her first three words since this horrific incident that robbed her of so much. One of these was the word mum, which must have sent Nikki into a puddle of tears. The strength of Angel, Nikki and Paddy fills me with so much respect. I wish I could be as brave as they are. I'm sorry, but sentences in this country are pathetic, especially regarding domestic abusers. Angel will never have the career she wanted. She will likely never have children and her life will likely be a struggle every day. I've no doubt their parents are terrified what will happen to their daughter when they are no longer around. Their worlds have been turned upside down. How this pain and suffering was only worth 12 years in prison is beyond me. This family are serving a life sentence and I believe this was the only appropriate punishment that should have been passed in this case. I've given little snippets of the profile of Che Boskill during this video. He is, like so many other domestic abusers, a weak and pathetic man whose feelings of inadequacy bled into his behaviour, with him clearly being emotionally dependent on intimate relationships but fearing being abandoned, so the only way he felt he could ensure that things continued was not trust, love and support, no, it was to destroy the person that Angel Lynn was and leave her a shell of a woman. He worked quickly, making her feel loved and special, like he was her knight in shining armour, all the while placing himself in a position where he wanted her to be dependent on him too. He isolated her from her friends, her family, and got inside her head, making her feel unattractive, inadequate, like he was the only person who would ever love and care about her. Boskill didn't want a partner, he wanted a thing that he could use to bolster his self-esteem, he saw Angel as merely an object, something to control and abuse. He could treat her in any way he wanted, but God help her if she defied him. A good example of this was him repeatedly breaking up with her and then forcing her to beg to reunite and for him to forgive her. It was fine for Boskill to do this, he was in charge, but when Angel wanted to break away from him, she deserved to be punished. I've no doubt that this is what triggered the abduction. I believe that Angel was starting to break away from Boskill and told him on that day that she didn't want to be with him anymore. I imagine Boskill was incensed, not only by her daring to break up with him, but also that she, the woman who he considered his possession, was walking away from him. He couldn't stand that, so he bundled Angel into the van and snatched back control from her when she was trying to break free. We will never know what happened in that van, but I think it's possibly one of two scenarios. The first, which I think is more likely, is that Boskill pushed Angel out of the van, using this act as punishment to show her the consequences of daring to break up with him and question his authority in the relationship, with him potentially saying, if I can't have you, no one else can. However, the second scenario is that Angel did actually jump from the van. Whilst I think this is unlikely, this speaks to another potentially terrible realisation. The only reason why anyone would ever do something like this it's because this seemed like the lesser of two evils. I think if this happened, then it was out of sheer desperation, as Boskill had indicated to her that she was being driven to her death, that she would never go home, 
or be seen alive again. So, if Angel did jump, I have no doubt this is because she thought she was going to be murdered by Che Boskill. As I've already said, I firmly believe that Che Boskill's sentence should be in line with the life sentence that Angel, Nicky and Paddy are now serving. However, he'll be out of prison in just a few years. I've no doubt this horrific excuse for a man will seek out and abuse women as soon as he's released. Unfortunately, I fear we've not heard the last of Che Boskill. I think it's important to highlight signs that someone, including potentially you, may be in an abusive relationship. Abusers don't walk around with signs on their head, and they're often masters of manipulation. Their tactics can be extremely subtle, but no less insidious. These features may not necessarily mean that it's an abusive relationship, but it may suggest the relationship is unhealthy or one-sided, and that you, or someone you know, needs help to get out of something that will only harm them and not elevate them, as relationships should do. Obviously, this is not an exhaustive list. Please feel free to include more in the comments. So a big one, which I've mentioned in this video, is the concept of love bombing. Domestic abuse perpetrators are often emotionally dependent on relationships and want to establish control as quickly as possible. The way they tend to do this is to progress the relationship extremely quickly, using words like love within two minutes of the relationship starting, showering the person with gifts and attention. Other signs can include suggestions to move in together, or even get married or have children extremely quickly. All of these behaviours are intended to lock in the victim, create a bond between them as quickly as possible, in order to solidify control. So, if someone tells you they've met someone and they're already talking about moving in together after five minutes, then be on your guard. Another huge warning flag is a change in someone's routine. Compromising a relationship is normal, but if someone is changing everything about themselves in order to please the other person, this can be an indicator of coercive control. If someone you're with tries to stop you from dressing how you usually dress, going to places you usually go, and talking to people you usually talk to, this could be a sign of someone trying to mould you into someone who is isolated and under their control. Running alongside this is a change in someone's personality. Relationships are exciting. It's wonderful to find someone you can spend your time with. So if someone is anxious, on edge, withdrawn, and has lost the spark that makes that person them, then you need to consider whether this relationship, more specifically the person they are with, is the one causing them to change. This may be an indicator they are trying to destroy the person their partner is, and replace them with someone they feel more easily able to control and abuse. It's also important to look for signs of physical trauma in others. Keep an eye out for bruising, and especially look for marks around the neck area, which may suggest strangulation. I cannot overstate how dangerous strangulation is, and how much of an indicator of potential homicide it is. I read a statistic that around a quarter of all domestic murders in the UK are as a result of strangulation. In terms of support, I want to reiterate services that can help you or loved ones escape domestic abuse, as well as schemes that can help you get information to check if you or someone close to you is in a relationship with a domestic abuser. So, if you're experiencing domestic abuse and need advice and support in England, you can call Refuge's National Domestic Abuse Helpline on 0808 2000 24 7. In Northern Ireland, call the Domestic and Sexual Abuse Helpline on 0808 802 1414. In Scotland, call the Domestic Abuse and Forced Marriage Helpline on 0800 027 1234. In Wales, call Live Fear Free on 0808 80 10 800. If you're in the US, call the National Domestic Violence Hotline on 1-800-799-SAFE, so that's 7233. You can also get additional support from websites for each of these organisations, and I'll put contact information in the description box. Also, please don't forget about Claire's Law in the UK, which enables you to gain access to information about men who you or a loved one are in a relationship with. The best thing to do with this is to go into your local police station and ask for a disclosure under Claire's Law, and there'll be someone to help you fill the forms in. It's about proportionality. If the police feel there is information you or someone else needs to know, then this will be disclosed. This disclosure scheme exists under different names in Wales, Scotland and Northern Ireland, and I would advise you to go into your local police station if you want to make these requests. Most forces will look to give you the information within 28 days. I'm unapologetic about continuously returning to the issue of domestic abuse. Two women a week in the UK alone are murdered by their partner 
or former partners. Domestic abuse is one of the most dangerous, pervasive and least understood or punished crimes which extends across gender, race, sexuality and age. And if I can help save just one person or give someone a bit of a light at the end of the tunnel, I would consider my time on this earth well spent. As a final point, please do not be scared about seeking support. People only want to help you, not judge you. Survivors of domestic abuse are some of the bravest people I have ever met. Please don't believe the lies you're being told by a partner who is so weak that they're not fit to shine your shoes, let alone dominate your attention and your life. So, what's your thoughts on this case? Please feel free to comment below. If you like the content, please consider becoming a channel member by clicking the join button, which is £2.99 a month, or around $4. You get early access to videos, and an icon next to your name, which changes from bronze to silver to gold, depending on how long you've been a member. Also, consider sending a super thanks, which is a one-off payment to support the channel. Please like, share and subscribe. Take care, and I'll see you in the next one.